Differentiation Techniques, Part 4. I was recently asked by my school district's Advanced Placements Department to prepare a presentation to students at the district's AP Calculus Prep Session next month. My assigned topic is Differentiation Techniques, and these techniques are specifically the Power Rule, the Product Rule, the Quotient Rule, the Chain Rule, Implicit Differentiation, Trigonometric Differentiation, uh, Differentiation of Logarithmic Functions, and Exponential Differentiations. Here's a list of other ways of saying differentiate. And here's a list of uses for differentiating. Not a complete list, but an indicator of how much the world of differentiation encompasses. And of all the techniques, again for those having watched earlier videos in the, in the series, the first one mentioned, the power rule is the one thing if properly applied is a bedrock foundation or staple for most of the other methods and will take you a long ways in calculus. In materials for the lesson, I was given 24 multiple choice problems. In this presentation, we'll get to the last six of those problems, numbered 19 through 24. Here's our first problem, problem 19. If f and g are twice differentiable, and if h of x equals f of g of x, then h double prime of x is? And we're given our five multiple choice options, a through e. This is a composition of functions, and therefore a chain rule application. Problem 16 in the part 3 video is in some ways a prequel to this problem. h prime of x will be the derivative of the inner function, which is g prime of x, times f prime of g of x. And now using the product rule, we'll organize by letting g prime of x be u, and f prime of g be h prime of g of x be v. Accordingly, we have u prime equal to g double prime of x and v prime equal to g prime of x times f double prime of g of x. So doubly differentiated, we have h double prime of x equals g prime of x times g prime of x times f prime of g of x plus f prime of g of x g double prime of x. I brought to the lower right to have enough room to expand. This is uv prime plus vu prime. The two g prime of x's in the first term we can rewrite as squared, so we have h double prime of x equals quantity g prime of x squared times f prime of g of x plus f prime of g of x times g double prime of x. And we have this as our correct answer and circle the correct answer choice answer A. The feature techniques here are the chain rule and the product rule of differentiation. Problem 20, if f of x equals x times the square root of quantity 2x minus 3, then f prime of x equals, and we're given our five multiple choice answers A through E. This problem is an opportunity for using the power rule, chain rule, and product rule of differentiating. First, what I call a calculus friendly rewrite. The rewrite is f of x equals x times quantity 2x minus 3 to the 1 half power. The radical form of exponent was changed to the rational form. To get ready to use the product rule, we'll let u equal x and the square root of quantity 2x minus 3 to the 1 half power equal v. And accordingly, u prime equals 1 and v prime equals 2 times quantity 2x minus 3 to the negative 1 half power. So f prime of x equals x times quantity 2x minus 3 to the negative 1 half power time, plus 1 times quantity 2x minus 3 to the 1 half power. Now having differentiated, it is now a matter of simplifying our answer. We'll factor out a quantity 2x minus 3 to the power of negative 1 half from each term, and we get f prime of x equals quantity 2x minus 3 to the negative 1 half power times x plus quantity 2x minus 3 to the first power. And simplifying inside the parentheses on the right, we have f prime of x equals quantity 2x minus 3 to the negative 1 half power times quantity 3x minus 3. In converting the quantity 2x minus 3 to the negative 1 half power back into radical form, we have f prime of x equals 3x minus 3 over the square root of quantity 2x minus 3. And we box in our answer is correct and circle the correct multiple choice answer, answer A. In this problem, we used the product rule, the power rule, and the chain rule, but I think the most challenging part of the problem was not in the calculus, but perhaps in the algebraic simplification, factoring out the quantity 2x minus 3 to the negative 1 half power. Problem 21, ddx cosine squared x cubed equals, and we have our five answer choices A through E below. You may ask me, 
What do you see, wise one, or something like that, and so I will get out my crystal ball. Oh, calculus problem, I see in your future the use of the chain rule. Wait, wait, I'm getting chain rule again. Can this be right? Yes, I'll stand by my fortune telling. The chain rule will appear twice, along with the power rule as well. First, let's do a rewrite of the problem. It's rewritten here with the squared going outside the whole expression. Using the chain rule, we get 2 cosine x cubed times ddx cosine x cubed. And from here, we'll use the chain rule again and get 2 cosine x cubed times negative sine x cubed times ddx of x cubed. And since the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, we have 2 cosine x cubed times negative sine x cubed times 3x squared. In simplifying, we have negative 6x squared cosine x cubed sine x cubed. And now, having simplified as much as possible, we box in our correct answer and circle the correct multiple choice answer D. Yes, the chain rule is used twice along with the power rule. Problem 22, if x squared plus y squared equals 25, what is the value of d squared y over dx squared at the point 4 comma 3? And then we have our five multiple choice options A through E. This d squared y over dx squared means that we'll need to find y double prime, or we need to differentiate twice to get what we need. But before we go ahead and work it out, let's make a quick sketch. This is the graph of a circle with a radius of 5 units and a center at the origin. And here's that sketch. This graph represents the equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. The coordinates at the x-axis on the right of the circle are 5, 0, and the coordinates at the top of the circle are 0, 5. So the point 4, 3 is over here in the quadrant quadrant one about here on the circle where the tip of the arrow is. This drawing lets us know two things. First, that dy dx at this point is negative since the slope is downward. And secondly, and more importantly in this case, we know that d squared y dx squared is negative also. And why do we know that? We know that because the graph is concave down in the shape at this point. So far in the use of these techniques, we haven't looked at the answers much before solving, but in this case we can already eliminate and cross off answers C, D, and E because the, these uh, second derivatives are positive. Let's get to working out the problem. Going about solving for y, we subtract x squared from both sides of the equation and get y squared equals 25 minus x squared. Solving for y, we take the square root of both sides of the equation and get y equals the square root of quantity 25 minus x squared. We would normally say plus or minus in front of that radical, but because we know the point in is in quadrant 1, we're using the plus the square root of quantity 25 minus x squared. Next, we'll rewrite the equation in calculus-friendly form as y equals quantity 25 minus x squared to the power of 1 half. Differentiating by using the chain rule and the power rule, we get negative 2x times 1 half times the quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. And canceling the 2 over 2, we get negative x times quantity two, 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. Now, differentiating a second time, we use the product rule. The u will be the negative x, and the v will be quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. And I'm placing this at the upper right. And accordingly, u prime will be negative 1, and v prime will be negative 1 half times negative 2x times quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 3 halves power. We can further simplify the v prime by multiplying negative 1 half by negative 2. In fact, their multiplications uh, multiplication cancel to equal 1. So applying our u and v and u prime and v prime, we get y double prime equals negative x times x quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 3 halves power plus negative 1 times quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. Here we have u, u prime, v, and v prime in their proper places. This gives us y double prime equals negative x times x times quantity 25 minus x squared to the power of negative 3 halves plus negative 1 times quantity 25 minus x squared to the power of negative 1 half. 
and this simplifies to y double prime equals negative x squared times quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 3 halves power minus quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. Now this is a bit of tricky part. This is the same type of factoring technique we did for a problem earlier, problem 20. We factor out negative uh, quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 3 halves power and get negative quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 3 halves power times in parentheses x squared plus quantity 25 minus x squared to the first power. Here's where the tricky part of the factoring is. If you multiply negative quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 3 halves power by quantity 25 minus x squared to the first power you'll get uh, minus quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. Now simplifying inside parentheses on the right we get x squared minus x squared cancelled equals 0. So simplifying and bringing the work up to the right side we have y double prime equals negative 25 over quantity 25 minus x squared to the 3 halves power and rewriting the denominator in rational form we get y double prime equals 25 or equals negative 25 over the square root of quantity 25 minus x squared raised to the third power. Next we'll go to plug in 4 so we get y double prime of 4 equals negative 25 over the square root of 25 minus 4 squared raised to the third power. We've run out of room so I'm moving everything on the right side up. We further simplify and get y double prime of 4 equals negative 25 over the square root of 9 raised to the third power. And finally, we end up with y double prime of 4 equals negative 25 27ths. So we box in our correct answer and circle our correct multiple choice, choice A. If I'm working this problem on the AP test next May, I'm circling A the second I see the numerator working out to be negative 25. Problem 23, let h be a differentiable function with h of 3 equals 2 and h prime of 3 equals negative 4 and let g be the function defined by g of x equals x squared h of x. Which of the following is the equation of a line tangent to the graph of g at the point where x equals 3? And we have our five multiple choice answers a through e. For the equation of tangent line, what do we need? We need a point and a slope. We already have an x coordinate. To get our y coordinate, we need to plug in 3 for x and we need to plug in 2 for h of 3. So g of 3 is 3 squared times 3. So g of 3 equals 18. So our point is 3 comma 18. Now we'll work at finding the slope. Since we have the product of two functions, we'll use the product rule and it's that if we have a function as u times v, uv prime is equal to u times v prime plus v times u prime. We'll let x squared be our u and h of x be our v. Therefore, u prime is 2x. And for this problem, we're given h of x, which is really h of 2, so v equals 2 and v prime equals negative 4. So we can write an equation for g prime of x equal to x squared times negative 4 plus 2 times 2x. So g prime of 3 equals 3 squared times negative 4 plus 2 times 2 times 3. So g prime of 3 equals negative 36 plus 12, which equals negative 24. So our slope of the tangent line, m sub t, is negative 24. Therefore, using the point-slope form and our point and slope, we have y minus 18 equals negative 24 times quantity x minus 3. So we box in our answer is correct and circle the correct answer choice D. Problem 24, if f of x equals tangent of 2x, then f prime of pi over 6 equals question mark. And we have our five multiple choices a through e. Since this is a composition of functions with the tangent of 2x, we will need to apply the chain rule. If you watched part 1, you were introduced to the attractive Miss Tan who helps us to remember how to differentiate the tangent and secant functions. Using the tangent differentiation, f prime of x equals the secant squared of 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So f prime of x is 2 times the secant squared of 2x. The chain rule is what we use to get this 2 out front, which is the derivative of 2x. And substituting, f prime of pi over 6 equals 2 times the secant squared of 2 pi over 6. 
and 2 pi over 6 simplifies to pi over 3. And to evaluate the secant of pi over 3, we'll consult the unit circle at pi over 3, the cosine is 1 half. And therefore, since the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, the secant of pi over 3 will be 2. Therefore, f prime of pi over 6 equals 2 times 2 squared, or 8. And we box in our correct answer and circle our correct answer choice, E. Here we are at the end of this four-part series covering 24 problems. Some of these problems were quite challenging. I made several mistakes throughout the making of this, some related to paying more attention to making the graphics than working out the calculus or the algebra. But again, the hardest parts I saw in any of these problems was not the calculus itself, but rather the algebraic simplification afterwards. In problems 20 and 22 on this video, part 4, you may pay attention to how to factor when you have two different fractional powers of, uh, of function compositions. Summarizing of the 24 problems covered, 20 used the power rule at some level, 8 the product rule, 1 the quotient rule, 12 the chain rule, 1 implicit differentiation, differentiation. 9 trigonometric differentiation, 3 were logarithmics, and 3 were exponential. 2 or 3 of these problems, or maybe 3 or 4, required the use of 4 of these methods. This has been Differentiation Techniques Part 4. Thanks for viewing.